Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for another day that He has allowed us to see. Amen. And enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. We welcome you to the services of the Straightway Church of Christ written in heaven. Where the Apostle Pauline Johnson is the founder, amen, and pastor. Amen. We welcome you to enjoy the services with us. If you have prayer requests, you may send them in. And then you can contact us at area code 561 351 4881. And we will pray with you, we'll pray for a problem you have, and we will rejoice with you as God gives you the answer to your prayers. May God bless you, and again, we thank you for tuning in with us.
Amen. We thank God, amen, for his goodness. We ask and pray for the church and all over the land. Amen. We thank God also for, amen, more than conquerors. Going back into the house of the Lord today. Let's keep them in prayer that God, amen, will stand up in them, shine up through them. Amen. And bless Pastor me as he leads the people to victory. Amen. Let's we are praying for the Reed families everywhere. Amen. For the Morgan family. Amen. The Halliburtons. Amen. And it's just so many. Let's pray for all the Reed families all over the land. Also let us pray. Amen. For our children that God will put a hedge around them. Keep them. Amen. Take the wrong thoughts out of their minds. Hedge them up. Amen. Take the joy out of things that they are doing till they come crying. I yield. I can't hold out no longer. Amen. And let's pray one for the other that God will keep us. Amen. In his perfect will. Amen. That we will be examples. Amen. For the people around us. Let's pray one for them. Amen. Amen.
the journey that you recently took me upon. And I thank you for the path that you laid before me. Amen. On the other side of that journey. Dear Lord, I pray and ask that you will continue to watch over us, God, and to direct us. Father God, in spite of what's going on, our Heavenly Father, we pray that all people, especially God's people, will continue to look to the ear of what's coming out here, for we know that all I have is coming from you, dear Lord. The one that promised that all sickness is not up to death. And for that I pray, and that I hold on. And that I pray that all mankind will catch on. And that it will grow in their hearts and in their spirits. And Father God, that we all will shop with you on the other side of this very state that our world is in now. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's, if it's all right, I am going to borrow a saying from my sister and the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to be for you long. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to let God have this word. Those of you that have your weapon of warfare with you, amen, within the Holy Bible, God, sanctified for the precious word, your sword, your weapon of warfare. If you would call me in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, Daniel, chapter 3. Verses 17 and 18, and then we'll skip down to verse 24 through 26. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, then we'll take a little short skip and a hop over to the 24th verse to the 26th verse. We have to say that. And you'll find these words written. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. But if not, be it known unto thee, O King that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counsel, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo came forth of the midst of the fire. Amen. And if I were to put a topic upon this, amen, it will come in the form of a question. 
Do you have this kind of faith? Do you have this kind of faith? In the time that we're in now, in the trouble that is all through the land, people are confused and worried about should they or should they not take a shot. Science and medical professionals are telling us today that people that have taken the shot have died. People that have not taken the shot have died. Young and old, rich and poor, white or black, religious or non-religious, have died, is died, is, is going to die because of this fiery furnace that we presently call COVID-19 virus. Amen? To give you a little history about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, three, three young men are Jewish young men. They are Jewish descendants, Jewish parents. Amen. But because of an invasion upon the Jewish people, a lot of people, especially the fair people, were taken captive and taken into Babylon. Amen. As captives. Now, these three Jewish young men, they found favor in the eyesight of the king. Amen. And the king wanted to make them citizens of Babylon. Amen. And in order to be citizen, a citizen of Babylon, you have to have a Babylonian name. So hence their name will change to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. And during their stay in the captivity, amen, in Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar had made this, this golden image of himself. Amen. And he made the decree and sent it out throughout the land that when they hear the horns playing, the harps playing, and all of the instruments playing, that everyone was to bow down, stop what they're doing right there, and bow down, amen, and pray to the image. But these three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, amen, going on about their business as they did from day to day in Babylon. These young men had a little more liberty and freedom than other Babylonian cap captains. Amen. And when the music began to play, everyone stopped what they're doing. Whether they were eating, working, conversation, whatever it was, they knew the decree of the king and they stopped doing what they were doing. Except Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Let me tell you, brother and sister, when you decide to live for the Lord, speak for the Lord, to do what the Lord says, somebody is watching, trying to find fault. These three Hebrew boys did not stop to honor the music nor the image. But there were those that were watching. And they saw the three Hebrew boys refused to honor the decree of the king, the king never can ever. And these three years went back and were reported to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar took the report and he sent for these three Hebrew boys. Amen. And these three boys standing before the king when it was brought to them the accusation that was put against them, they stood their ground. My king, the old king, never could never. They were so bold that they told him, uh, we are not kept but even after the end of the battle. In other words, they were telling him, in spite of what we say, you're going to do what you're going to do anyway. So we just not going to even answer this. But I would tell you this. If 
it be so? Our God, who we serve, is able yeah. to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O oh King. Do you have that kind of faith? COVID is real. It's nothing to take as a joke. Poverty is real. Affliction is real. Starvation is real. But God is able. Amen. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. There's nothing that's going on, amen, that he don't know about. There's nothing that can be done that he can't see or he's aware of. Amen. God is able to go beyond the doctor. God is able to go beyond the medicine. Amen. God is able to go far above in what God says it seems to be, it seems to matter. If the doctor says there's no hope, God says all things is not into unto them. So whose report do you believe? This world today that we're living in. I'm telling you, if what more do you need to see the need to turn to the almighty, all-powerful, only true and living God? He is the only way out. Medicine works, but God is behind the medicine. God gives man the ability to create the medicine. If God says you're going to die, I don't care what medicine man can come up with, you're going to die. If God says you're going to live, amen, I don't care what the prognosis is, you shall live if you have the faith. Amen. you got to have faith. On August 7th of this year, amen, I had a very hard time breathing. I couldn't get enough air in to even utter a word. My wife took me to Palmy John's Medical Center. Amen. And I was admitted into the hospital. I was diagnosed with COVID-19 and COVID-19 related pneumonia. I had so much pneumonia built up into my lungs that I was actually suffocating from the inside out. Amen. I was admitted to the hospital. I was placed in a room. One evening I looked out the window over until the other adjacent building. And as I look down from the third floor to the second floor, I can see the doctors and the hospital chaplain and another worker cover a person's body up, place that body in a plastic bag, put that body in a cardboard box, and roll that body out of the room. I cried like a little school girl that had her ice cream and candy taken from her. But in the midst of crying, I said, I shall live and not die. I came to the hospital to get well and not get worse. I came in here, but I'm going back home, amen. And I'm going home here from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I will not die, amen. But if it's God's will, that God's will be done, amen. But I was determined that I'm coming back home, amen. I still had a little work to do for God, amen. I was determined that it wasn't over with yet, amen. In spite of what the doctor said, amen, that I had going on in my body, amen, I declared it myself, I declared it an atmosphere, and I declared to everyone come in the room, even the other patients that share the room with me, God is real, and I shall live and not die, because God is who he is, and great as he has, and have the power that he has. I am standing here today to God be the glory. Amen. But do you have that kind of faith? Amen. To the Christian people, we got to stand up. Amen. 
It's easy to say, I have faith. But do you really have faith? Amen. For trials and tribulations, heartaches and pain, amen. Sickness and affliction, amen. Even when death is knocking on the door, it will tell whether you have faith or not. Faith is what you do, amen, in the midst of a crisis, amen. Faith is who you turn to in the midst of a crisis, amen. Faith is who you depend on, amen. And I depend on J-E-S-U-S, amen, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus Christ, amen, you don't have what you need to survive in this pandemic, amen. The vaccine, amen, may work well, amen, they say. You may live with it, you may die with it, amen. But if you have Jesus Christ, amen, as your Lord and your Savior, amen, you might go to the hospital, you might go to the doctor's office, amen. You might even get so far, amen, that they put tubes in your body, ventilators on you, things to help you breathe, amen. But I'm here to tell you, amen, if you die in Christ, you are not dead. The Bible says we just sleep, amen. And heaven is our home. Because to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Amen. But can you say that? If you are a sinner caught in sin, amen, and you have not made that decision, amen, this is a perfect time. This is a perfect opportunity, amen. Because the next death that may come knocking at your door may be your very own. The next notice, amen. The next obituary that's printed up, amen. The next casket that is bought, the next grave plot that is bought, it might be yours. Do you want to gamble with your life? Amen. We all know that man that was born of a woman of uh, but of a few days, they are full of trouble. The preacher tells us in Ecclesiastes that. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Every one of us that's living, amen, to have our right mind, amen, we know, we know when our birthday is. But we don't know when our death date is, amen. We don't know the date, the time, or the hour when Jesus Christ is going to come back. But my Bible tells me, amen, that Jesus Christ is going to come like a thief in the night. No man know the day, no man know the hour, not even the angels even know, amen. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Put your life in the hands of Jesus Christ. In Christ, there's liberty. In Christ, there's liberty. In Christ, there's healing. In Christ, there's deliverance. In Christ, there's strength in times of weakness. In Christ, the sun is shining in darkness, amen. In Christ, there's peace in the midst of the storm, amen. In Christ, amen. You have the greatest doctor that you need, even if you're on your deathbed, amen. In Christ, amen. In Christ. In Christ. If you don't have Christ, you don't have what you need. Do you have the faith that these three Hebrew boys had? Amen. It's easy to walk around and say, oh Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. But behind closed doors, when the doctor gives you a pastor out, you want to wear the preacher's out. But my Bible tells me, amen, that if I have faith besides the grave of a mustard seed, amen, I can look to death. I can look to die, a diabetes. I can look to anything that the devil throw my way. It says, be thou removed in the name of Jesus. It says, it shall be removed. Amen. Jesus tells me that whatever I should ask of the Father in his name, it shall be done. Where's your faith? Activate your faith. Put your faith to work, amen. Put it together, amen. Somebody's watching you because you say you're a Christian, amen. And they want to see where your faith is, amen. Let your light so shine, amen, that this dying world can see that the God that we serve, that created everything, that the Jesus Christ, amen, that we speak so much about is a real Jesus, amen. He have healing power. He have saving power. He have resurrection power. Amen. Amen. These Hebrew boys had faith. They didn't wither. They didn't shake. They didn't run. They didn't hide. They knew what they did. And they knew that what they did violated the king's decree. Amen. And they knew of the consequences. Yet still, 
When the king sent for them, amen, they went right on to him, just like he said for them. Amen. And were bold enough to tell the king, amen, the God that we serve, he's able to deliver us from the fire and furnace. He's able to deliver us even out of your hand. But if he don't do it, amen, we know that he can do it, amen. Do you have this kind of faith? God bless you. Thank you. 